what, what would you do if, you know, when, because I, you know, I get this accusation from time to time. What do you do when someone says uh, Christianity is a cult? Mm. Yeah. What's the difference? So what are some clear distinctions that you could equip our listeners with to say, here are some tenets of Christianity that are an absolute contradiction to the tenets of a cult? Right. So one of the things, too, is that we are in a postmodern culture. So words aren't much about substance and fact as much as they are impact words about how the, this is about how it makes you feel. So it's an emotional impact word versus something that's intellectually. This is how you are supposed to. This is this is how it is. So one of the ways is that every cult definitively they they veer away from they they, they veer away from some sort of form of their orthodoxy and they always they always appeal to some form of private esoteric revelation without any sort of external verification. They're the ultimate pinpoint and authority. So one of the amazing things is that, you know, God's revelation is always consistent in Christianity with his character. So God is triune. He's father, son, and Holy spirit. So his very nature when we talk, is congruent with the standards that he gives for revelation and truth, talking about everything has to be confirmed by two to three independent lines of testimony and witness. So God's very own self revealing nature is two to three independent, you have two to three independent witnesses. Love it. And so what you end up seeing within biblical Christianity is not just, not just myths or some sort of weird abstract vision, but we're talking about historical places, uh, historical people written over thousands of years that were, uh, as, as Bodhi Bach would say, this is uh, God's, the revelation of the Bible, which we would say is the ultimate standard because every cult is a distortion of that is that it's a reliable collection of historical documents that was written by eyewitnesses during the a lifetime of other eyewitnesses who uh, witnessed supernatural events in fulfillment of specific prophecy. So all of that being said, one of the definitive characteristics is that the Bible is an open book. It's an open, it's an open and public record of these events that transpired in the public sphere. And so in that way, that would be something that would be alternative. We're not saying, hey, we have this secret, hidden, esoteric knowledge. This is something that was privately revealed to me. No, I, I have a relationship with the living God, but you know what? It's not just because I say so. This is because I have a standard that I appeal to. That's an external, reliable collection of historical documents. Like, why do you think of all as much as, you know, just jumping into the evidential world, as many manuscripts and evidence that we have in regards to the Bible, why is it the most attacked historical book on earth? Uh, as far as any book of, of history, why is it the most scrutinized, the most attacked? How come no one holds the writings of Plato or Socrates to the same standard of scrutiny that they do to the Bible, even though we have something with it for a century? So, yeah, there, there's that aspect. And one of the things you also see, too, is that in with real – Christian apologetics and the real Christian worldview, especially if you just look at the first century, you would see not this sort of isolation of members, you know, did, we're going to isolate you from everyone else and indoctrinate you. No, we are going to go out to the world and we're going to challenge every single worldview out there and tear down every stronghold and set up and you know, and take every thought captive against anything that sets itself against the knowledge of God. I mean, you see Paul, for example, when he's going uh, to Athens and he is reasoning with the other worldviews, he's going and talking to the Stoics, to the philosophers, to going to the synagogues and engaging them in the public sphere. Cults don't do that. They try and isolate people. They try and appeal towards secret, hidden, esoteric knowledge. And they don't allow, they don't allow questioning. They don't allow that. And real honestly like real christianity like it, it allows for that like bring bring the biggest thoughts like wrestle with this this is right. something that would be that would be a that would be a big aspect as well too and so That's i think the, yeah and i think and ultimately like the biggest challenge that i honestly at some point we are going to dedicate an episode to this because when you have someone who's atheist or agnostic and we get this and i, I don't know sometimes we sort of make fun of it but i want to do more than that just because we are we are limited for time but we consistently get reviews on iTunes called we're another cult talking about cults. 
<laughs> and it's like, wow, this is so stunningly original. This is the tw- this is the you know, it gets kind of old after the fifth year time, or however many times we've gotten reviews like that. But the reality is is that for someone who is who is an atheist or a naturalist, what how do you even give an accounting for what is or isn't a cult? What exactly is wrong with my brain fizzing a certain level of knowledge, which is just my perception of the world in which I was born and once and I'm blind, pitiless, indifference. And and yeah, like how how can you how can you give an accounting for like what what's the ethic? What ethic am I violating? Or what ethic was Jim Jones violating when he's his brain was fizzing the way that it was and got 915 other people's brains to fizz and take down this other fizz called potassium cyanide and killed 915 people in Jonestown, Guyana. Now I have a basis as a Christian to say, yes, those people were image bearers of God. The one it says, uh, do not bear false witness. Uh, thou should not murder. Uh, love does no harm to its neighbor. There's rules in, in which in the world that God created and you have to live by that. And if you don't have that standard, well, you're not going to be able to give an ultimate accounting for that. And I think that's one of the reasons why most of the quote unquote experts in regards to the world of cults, whereas uh, Rick Allen Ross or Steve Hassan, while they can give sort of a, a, a general explanation of this sociological and psychological manipulation, and sometimes the deprogramming that people have to do they don't have an ultimate point of reference where they can give an accounting for why that's even an issue to begin with or why, mm-hmm. why because the, the existence of a counterfeit predicates the authenticity of an original um, for good. sure. So those are just some of my initial thoughts, but ultimately it, I would argue that the Christian worldview is a public record versus a yeah. private revelation, which is the difference between every single cult, a cultic leader and then also to argue the impossibility of the contrary. There's no other worldview that can give a fully holistic explanation for the world of the cults and the counter and, and the counterfeits. As Walter Martin would say, the existence of a counterfeit predicates the authenticity of an original. And no other secularist who approaches that has the ability to do that because they're not giving, uh, they're not paying homage to the ultimate authority, which is uh, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Mm-hmm. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, uh, we hope that you'll take a moment and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can watch more content like this. Also, take a moment and give this video a like so that it can reach more people. And take a moment and click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever we come out with new content. Thanks so much. God bless.